Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Disgraceful Treatment of Mary Queen of Scots' Body Mary Queen of Scots was the Queen of Scotland for around 25 years, until she was forced to abdicate the throne in favour of her son. She was just six days old when she inherited the throne, and her life was dominated by a tragic love life and also by political scheming and power plays. She was then forced to leave Scotland before being imprisoned in England by her cousin Elizabeth I. Mary, for many Catholics across the nation, served as a possible Queen of England, and they wanted her to be Queen over Elizabeth, and Mary would take part in a number of plots to oust and assassinate Elizabeth, including the Babington plot, which led to her execution. Inside the walls of Fotheringhay Castle, on the 8th of February 1587, the former Queen of Scotland walked into the Great Hall for her date with the executioner, and she was confronted by the executioner's block, and also the executioner with his axe. It was a sorry sight, with many witnesses seeing the end of a queen's life, and the decision to execute Mary would haunt Elizabeth I until the day she died. But, following her execution, Mary's remains and body were treated in a terrible way, and she was not given, initially, the respect she deserved for who she was. Inside of Fotheringhay Castle's Great Hall, Mary, attended on by two of her ladies, walked towards the scaffold where the block was to lay her head. On the scaffold were three stools, one for her and two for the Queen's official witnesses, and she then disrobed and sorted her final possessions out. She handed these to her ladies and then prepared herself for her execution. She took off most of her outer garments, leaving her in her petticoat and kirtle, and then her ladies prayed for Mary and she embraced them and kissed them, bidding them farewell, telling them not to cry any more tears for her. Mary had come to terms with her death and demise, and when the two women left her, she bid her manservants goodbye, and it was time for her to address the executioner. He was given some form of payment to take the former Queen of Scotland's head clean off, and Mary then gave the executioner her forgiveness for what he was about to do. She then prayed in Latin a number of times before she looked at the executioner's block and then grabbed the block and laid her head upon it. The executioner's assistant then held her head whilst the executioner prepared his axe. Mary's arms were held close to the block to begin with and then she stretched her arms out saying she was ready to die. With this the executioner's axe crashed down and the first stroke missed and embedded into the back of Mary's head meaning she could have been knocked out by this, but it would have been very painful if not, and then the executioner tried again, and the second strike was more successful, almost taking her head off, except for a small part of sinew, which he then sawed through with his weapon. But following this, the executioner grabbed Mary's head from the floor, and then, as he grabbed the hair, it was actually a wig underneath, meaning that the head slipped, and then fell to the floor, hitting the scaffold, as he declared, God save the Queen. It was a disgraceful and shocking scene, with this being performed in front of a shocked crowd, and it was no way for a Queen's remains to be treated. The display of her head to the crowd inside of the Great Hall of Fotheringhay Castle was, in a sense, a final act of shame to Mary, Queen of Scots, as other queens who were executed did not have their heads shown to the crowd. This practice was done to show that the traitor was dead, and was a threat no more, and when Anne Boleyn lost her head for treason, incest and adultery inside of the Tower of London, this did not occur. Mary was more significant and important than Anne, but the swordsman who performed Anne's execution just allowed her ladies to gather her head and remains, and he did not show it to the people inside of the tower that day. He had the respect to not do this, but the executioner bull who took Mary's head had no such decorum to not do this. With the fact it fell to the floor was also seen as an act of savagery, and those who were witnessing it must have gasped in horror as the head fell and blood trickled off the scaffold. The only thing that showed any decency towards Mary while she lay there dead in the great hall was allegedly her small dog that was found under her garters and had been hidden, 
this animal, it's believed, then laid with her, even in her final moments. But another shocking thing that occurred after her execution was that, immediately, anything that had touched the Queen's blood was burned, washed or taken away. The officials were terrified that anything could be kept as a relic of Mary, and it would be worshipped in the centuries to come, and the fire inside of the Great Hall had much of this dumped upon it. But then everyone was sent out of the hall, as Mary's remains were then left on the scaffold, and the horror would continue. The sheriff, his men, and the officials were the only ones left inside of the hall, and they then collected Mary's head and her body, and placed it into a coffin. They then left the hall, and then took this into a room in the main castle building, and the coffin containing the former Queen of Scotland was left inside of a presence chamber, inside of Fotheringhay, ready for embalming. Whilst inside of the chamber, her remains were attended on by the surgeons, and they would have embalmed the former queen in the same way of royalty during the Tudor period. They removed her heart and her entrails, and they cut her corpse open, and then took these in a box and buried them somewhere secret inside of Fotheringhay's grounds. It's not known, also, if her head was sewn back onto her body, as this did occur at the time, as Charles I, later, would have his head sewn back on after he faced the axe in London. The surgeons also placed herbs and spices inside of her body to stave off decomposition and decay. However, the remains following this were simply left inside of the chamber at Fotheringhay for a number of months. Mary was not immediately buried, as Elizabeth I became indignant and outraged that the Privy Council had actually carried out her execution, but Elizabeth would continue in death to inflict misery upon Mary, Queen of Scots, and she would refuse her final wishes and beliefs. Mary longed, following her death, to be moved to France, as she wanted to be buried across the English Channel with her first husband and the former King of France, but Elizabeth, for some reason, would not grant Mary this wish, and she said that Mary did not deserve to go to France. It's not known for certain the reasoning, but this, but she would wield power over Mary, even in her death. Because of this, Mary was then buried in a place which was completely against her will, and this place would be Peterborough Cathedral. This was the closest cathedral to Fotheringhay, and it was where Catherine of Aragon, the first wife of Henry VIII, was buried. By putting Mary's remains here, it was worried that the site could become a place of Catholic pilgrimage, but... Mary was buried in a Protestant service. This was a huge disgrace as Mary, Queen of Scots, was a staunch Catholic and giving her a Protestant funeral was not acceptable. In England, Catholics and Protestants were almost at war and throughout the Tudor period, many people were executed and were burned at the stake during the religious turmoil of the time. But Mary's wishes for a Catholic funeral were not adhered to and this Protestant service was seen as Elizabeth I imposing her will yet again on Mary, forcing her to have a funeral service, comprising of nothing that she believed in. Today, Mary's tomb in Peterborough Cathedral was nothing. She was just interred at the side of the chancel under a slab. But then, following the death of Elizabeth I, Mary's son James I became the King of England, and he then ordered his mother to be exhumed in 1612. Mary, Queen of Scots' grave slab was lifted, and then her coffin containing her remains was taken from Peterborough to London, where it was then reinterred inside of a small chapel opposite the tomb of her great rival, Elizabeth. James ordered the tomb to be slightly bigger than Elizabeth's, having the last laugh over her. But Mary then, decades after her death, was laid to rest in a place and tomb which was deserving of her status. Her tomb would be opened in 1867, after the Dean of Westminster was searching for the resting place of her son. Mary, Queen of Scots' vault inside of Westminster Abbey would contain a number of her other descendants down the Stuart line, including even the children of Queen Anne, the last Stuart Queen. But she was a woman who, in death, deserved a lot more than she received, and she got little respect from Elizabeth I following her execution. She should have at least been given a Catholic funeral and been buried in France where she wanted to, but this was not adhered to, and it showed the disdain that many had towards her in the Tudor period. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History.
Thank you.